I've got a new 3D printer for you to have a look at today. It's the CR5 Pro H. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the name. I think they name printers with a dartboard and a D20 or something like reality. But I have it taken out of the box already because it weighs a massive 32 kilograms or over 70 pounds and I don't want to get crashed under the thing. Don't worry, the table and the tempered glass are good up to 100 kilos, so we are fine there. Okay? First, I, I'm not so thrilled about the Bowden tube here. Maybe when I load the filament, it will straighten out a bit. And this cable on the back, you see the XC axis pinched it. So if you're going to buy this unit, um, you gotta be careful about the cable management. I'm going to take it out in case uh, it wears out, but if it's hidden behind it, you didn't see it, you gotta be careful, you have to take it out first. Creality makes good printers, but I gotta say, cable management is their weak point. Okay, this printer has BL Touch Auto Leveling, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> This thing is a tank. Creality is usually good about building a mechanically set structure and that holds true here. Spot welded, heavy gauge sheet metal, this thing isn't going anywhere and that rigidity really helps print quality. Now this is almost identical to the CR5 printer, but the edit edge is for high temperature. I guess because it's the first Creality printer to expressly support filament with a printing temperature up to 300 degrees Celsius. The max for Creality is usually 260 degrees, and the heating back goes up to 110 degrees. The fully enclosed field area helps with those high temperature filaments to prevent warping. The print area is 300 by 225 by 380 millimeters, so bigger than the end of free, but smaller than a CR10. I'm okay with this. I prefer smaller bags, but I know most of you like really big ones. It uses a Bowden, not a direct drive. Again, I like Bowden. A lot of you like direct drive. Keep this in mind. Okay, enough talk. Let's start off with the basics. See how it handles PLA, then we'll move on to some high temperature filament. Okay, this is Kirimoto. It's a browser based slicer that I've been using a lot. Now, when I say browser based, browser not cloud. We all know cloud slicers are terrible. None of us want to send our files to somebody else. Somebody else servers anywhere. Kirimoto is open source software. It actually does all of that slicing in your browser. The STL file doesn't leave your computer, so it's very safe. I know a lot of you aren't so keen on using a Chinese slicer in a cloud or anything like that, so it's important to understand it doesn't send your file anywhere. Your STL stays in your browser and the program is completely open source. I'll link to the GitHub directory in the description box. I've been using it a lot, 
I really like it because it's really really simple, and I think that's important for people who are getting started out and people who do a lot of other stuff and don't want to spend their whole day playing around with slicer settings. I like that I can just get something quickly done. I can do it from any computer in the house. It doesn't have to be one of the computers that I have set up for slicing or anything like that. So let me show you how it works. I go to setup machine. And the cool thing about Kirimoto is you can actually slice for a lot of different things. You can slice for a small CNC machine, an SLA printer, or a laser engraver. You have a list of devices, your regular Ender 3, Ender 5, all of that kind of stuff. You can select one. In this case, I have a custom device because I just set up this CR5OH. And all the Gco is in there already, and your non normal stuff, your bad dimensions and stuff you wouldn't need to set it up. I'll try to make sure that the c r five o h is in the standard devices before any of you get one and in general, I'm going to try to make sure that the Creality printers end up in here because it is so useful. Keyword is great, but it's you know it's a little bit difficult when you are getting people started out. It's got a lot of different settings, and it can be difficult to get that going. So I'm gonna try to get more people on Kirimoto. Let me show you why. So this is my hidden bed. It gives me an idea where things are. I'm going to drag my 3D benchy onto the hidden bed, and there I go. And of course, we can look down around just like any other slicers. Very clean, very easy to manage. Really, all I have to do is go to slice and export. But let's wait a minute. Let me just show you where everything is. If I go to layers, 0.2 layer height, you know, normally we'll print between 0.1 and 0.3 depending where what we are doing, the shell speed and stuff. You don't really need to mess with this. I wouldn't bother. From time to time, and actually never uh, go through here. I put everything up at point two, but you know your sporters and stuff like that. If you want to mess with your temperatures and your speed, and you want to do this a lot, use Cure. If you just want to print and you are more into the design and the fabrication, use Kirimoto. I just use all of these default settings. I don't mess around too much, but it's here. It's there if you want to tweak your retraction setting, for instance, if you are getting stringing, you might tweak that fabrication. But the beauty of Kirimoto is you really don't have to. I can drop this on, I go to slice, and it's pretty quick. This is real time, you know, this isn't speed up or anything like that. It is in the browser, so it's probably not to be quiet as fast as Cure, but it's certainly not slow. Then it shows me my layer lines. If I want, I can go through, I can look for problems. The reality is I don't. I just hit print. I don't want to mess around with the slicer settings is a waste of my time. I want to make things and slicers are now good in love. The, unless you, they are your hobby, you should just be able to hit print. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export and can prepare that print for me. And again, this is real time. I'm not speeding anything up. And here we go. All I do now, I can rename it, but I'm not going to. I just click download and that's it. And then I'm going to put that on a card and I'm going to pop, go pop in my printer. Very simple, very easy. Let me show you how that works again. So I'm going to go back. There's my model. I'll move it. I have the more challenging torture test here. This is a uh, test developed by Autodesk and it's got all these very difficult features. This is bridging. The different degrees of overhang, different packs that can be removed. These towers, they tell you stringing. So this gives you a really good idea of how dialed in your printer is. And we are using settings that are pretty much straight out of the box. You know, it is not going to be perfect because nothing's perfect straight out of the box, but it's going to be pretty good. And this will give us an idea of what we need to fix. So again, going to slice and explore that. Our G code. We download that and we are going to bring it over to the printer.
and that's it. I'm going to recommend that Creality start shipping printers with instructions for Kirimoto instead of Keyword, just because it makes troubleshooting so much easier. I'm sure a lot of you remember if you are a 3D printer owner, that's a little bit challenging getting up and running with the Y version. If you're on Mac, if you're on Windows, if you're on Linux, my feeling is if we get people doing things on their browser, it's a little bit more simple. And once again, it's not doing this slicing in the cloud. This file is staying local on your machine. You can run this on a Raspberry Pi or something like that. So it's very promising software and I'm highly recommended. The URL is going to be in the description box. I recommend you go try it out. It's definitely a real favorite for me. As always, I'd just like to remind everyone I am sponsored by Creality. I do my best to be absolutely honest, but you never know when unconscious buyers can sleep in there. Please get a second opinion and watch a few videos from other channels before buying any Creality product I will. Okay, this is our first print. This Benchy is printed with PLA, very clean layer lines, but uh, as you can see, there are some stringy problems. But a uh, stringy problem is easy to fix. And I also printed the Benchy bowl with the PETG uh, filament. Uh, surprisingly, this uh, usually weave in an enclosure. This PETG doesn't have much stringy problem like the others. And I think I'm satisfied with this result. And this is the calibration print. Uh, for the first attempt, I think um, the only problem I've seen is the stringy thing, stringy problems. So uh, of course, for uh, I, I just printed out of box like this. I still have to dial it in and then make it look nicer. The major thing I don't like about the CR5 Pro H is it's yet another Creality printer that's being shipped without really good slicer profiles. We go through this every time. We get pretty good prints out of a new printer, but those print settings have to be dialed in before we can see really great quality. And that dialing in process is left up to the users. Same old story here. The CR50H has everything it needs for great prints, no real problems, but it's being shipped with, without optimized slicer settings. It takes a few days to do that, so it's something Creality should be doing themselves in-house before they release a printer. I've been telling Creality this for a while, but feel free to mention it to them as well online, in their forums, and elsewhere. It's pretty reasonable to buy a 3D printer and expect it to come with the best settings without having to fiddle around. The CR5 Pro H is fairly quiet, easy to level and easy to use. It looks like it's going to cost around $1,249. That's pretty expensive for a printer with this size bed. The extra money is clearly going to the enclosure and making all the construction more beefy. If anything, it's a bit overbuilt. It's all just thicker and heavier than it really needs to be. If you don't need an enclosure, don't get this printer. If you print a lot of high temperature filaments, it's the best printer Creality has for that. And it handles those materials really well. If you are in an education or a commercial setting where having an open bed moving around, it's a recipe for disaster. Again, very good reason. It's great for that. If you mostly print PLA at home in your garage or home office, something like that, eh, maybe think twice if you really need this kind of build quality for hobby applications. Final verdict. Fantastic printer if you are spending someone else's money to get it and you are the one who's going to use it. 
if you are spending your own money, think about the CR10S Pro version 2 or the Ender 3 Max. That's it for today. I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.